Genesis 1 to 11 are the most doubted chapters in the entire Bible. When creation scientist Henry Morris came to my Bible college, Pacific Christian College, he said, if you don't believe the first 11 chapters of Genesis, then what need do you have for John 3.16? Good point. If mankind didn't fall, then why does it need a Redeemer? If there wasn't a first Adam, then why believe Christ came as the second Adam? If death didn't come through Adam, then why believe eternal life came through faith in Christ? If man didn't get sold into sin, then why would anyone need Christ as the Redeemer? Those are really good questions. But my professors, and maybe yours, taught us how to spiritualize all sorts of things in the Bible and not believe that they were literal. May I show you something that my own professors missed, and yet it's right there in the text. May I show you how God proved we could take him literally from the very first chapters of Genesis? You may want to get out your Bible for this. Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. Let's go back to Genesis 2, verses 16 to 17. Let's listen to the voice of the Lord. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So what happened? According to Genesis 3.1, quote, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So the serpent was a beast of the field. That wasn't Satan. But Satan, as we learned by Revelation, did somehow speak through the serpent. The serpent got Eve to turn on God, starting with a single question. Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Or more simply, yea, hath God said? There is so much to say, but I'll keep this short. Eve wasn't there when God told Adam, first in 2.16, Eve wasn't created yet, and second, look at the Lord's words. He said, In the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Remember, a day is counted from evening to evening. So if they disobeyed God and ate from the fruit, they were condemned to die before sundown that same day. But you know what happened? Eve got deceived by the serpent. Then Genesis 3, 6, She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. That was what we call the fall. Then in verse 8, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. It's all the same day. The Lord God questions Adam, then God gets to the point in verse 11. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Then we come to the punishments. The Lord God cursed the ground for Adam's sake, uh, added grief to the delivering of children for Eve, told them their husband-wife relations would suffer, and cursed the serpent onto his belly to eat dust. The Lord God prophesied that one day the woman's seed was going to bruise the serpent's head. We all know that the seed would ultimately be Jesus and the serpent would ultimately mean the devil. Drop back in time with me into Bible college. Then we asked our professors, those are extra punishments, but what about the curse God originally told Adam? Back in 2.17, God said, In the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Well, said the professor, Adam died spiritually. We are all spiritually dead, separated from God, because of what Adam did. 
But see, that's not what God said, and I'll bet that's not what Adam thought either. I think he took God literally. I read through the Bible over and over. I'm sure many of you do too. One day recently, I looked at these verses for the bajillionth time, and then I saw it right there in the text. The answer had been there all along. Genesis 3, 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Where did the Lord God get those two coats of skins? The Lord had to kill two animals. Adam had named those animals. They lived with him. They were his friends, and they were totally innocent. So two innocent animals died for their sin, and there it is. The first atonement for sin. So what did we learn? Literally, Adam and Eve should have died that day. But God, in his mercy, substituted a perfectly innocent pair of animals to die in their place. There were two literal deaths in the day that he ate thereof, just as God had promised. But God, in his love, granted a substitute. It wasn't just spiritual. My professors were wrong. But you know what? Once they taught us that, it was put in our brains that it's all right to spiritualize all sorts of scriptures. By the time I was at Fuller Seminary, we had spiritualized Israel as the church and all sorts of literal scriptures. My professor said were symbolic, analogies, poems, stories, anything but literal. And yet it was right there, literally true, in Genesis 3, for anyone with eyes to see it. Brothers and sisters, we can take the Bible literally. But we can only take God literally if we have his literal words. After 37 years of diligent study, I can say I am sure I have the literal words of God in English right here, the King James Bible. My faith is based on this book. God's literal words in English. Do you have the literal words of God? Choose your Bible carefully. God bless you and have a wonderful day.